Welcome to Nietzsche's World, episode 13. This past Sunday, May 10th, we went on a great drive all throughout Buffalo to see all the artists that participated in the Proximity Art Event. There was 22 artists to be exact. Yeah, we saw about 12, and I picked my top five favorites. I was in charge of keeping directions. We only got lost twice. The Buffalo Proximity Art Project was inspired by musicians in Italy who played impromptu concerts on their balconies. What a great way to bring people together through art, even if they could only walk or drive by. Rock on! Our first artist is Carrie Ackett's. You probably remember her from the interview a couple episodes ago. I sure do. We went to her house and got to see her unique shapes cut out of paper hung in her front yard. It was so great she even lit it up at nighttime. The best thing was getting my picture with the artist. Wow, look at those colors. They're amazing. Kind of spooky even. But yeah, they look great. Great job, Carrie. This was pretty cool, the City Heart. Did you know that this is made entirely out of bicycle wheels? You can't even tell. What a great way to use something to display something else. Yeah, check this one out at night. The lights even make it look like the wheels are turning. This one was kind of neat. It was called Dialogue. Do you know why? It kind of seems like the idea of two cups tied together with a piece of string. The simplest forms of communication. It was really awesome. Hey, wasn't Mr. Yosef one of your teachers? Yep, way back when he was my fibers professor at Buff State. This next piece is done by Sarah Field Sonnenberg. Hey, isn't Sarah one of our good friends? She sure is. Isn't this your cousin Cassie's house? Yep. Look at all those fluorescent ants climbing all over it. At first I thought the ants were real, but then I got closer and realized they were make-believe. I even got a cool shot with the artist. Thanks, Sarah. Great job. This next piece inspired the art challenge. Wow. Look at all those pinwheels. I bet if they all spun at the same time, the house could fly away. Hey, Nietzsche, what do you think makes them spin? Is it magic? Uh, I think it's the wind. Oh. It wasn't all fun and games on this art trip. Get ready, cameraman. Here I come. Make sure you get a close-up. Too close! Too close! Yikes, there goes my phone. Art challenge, pinwheel time. What you will need to create your pinwheel, a sheet of computer paper, any color, colored pencils, scissors, a straw, and a pen. You're gonna take your computer paper and we do need a square. In order to get a square, you're taking it horizontal or hamburger and you are picking up the one edge and you're lining it up with the top edge. When you do this and line it up, you are going to press down and make a fold. You'll notice the extra piece hanging off the end now is a long rectangle. We are going to cut that off. You're cutting right on that line. I know it's hard to see here. When you cut that off, when you open it up, you will have a square. It already has one of the folds that we need. We need to make one more fold. You have a fold this way and we need a fold in the opposite direction. So you have an X or a cross on your paper. So you will see my X right there. And now it is time to decorate. All right, now time for my designs. Pick one design that you can repeat over and over and over again. I picked a swirl. I'm gonna do this in each section. There are four triangle sections I'm filling with swirls. Fill the whole thing and use a lot of bright, fun colors. I'm using colored pencils because markers would go through the paper and ruin the other side. So colored pencils are the safest bet. When I am done with one side, all swirls, I flip it over and do the same thing but pick a new design. 
I'm just going to pick polka dots for this side. So I'm going to fill my whole page with polka dots. I'm really taking my time because I want these to look good. So I'm trying to catch all the white spaces when I color in my circles. Now we're going to cut on the folded lines. You're going to need four cuts. Instead of cutting four separate times, I am going to take my paper and I'm going to fold it on one of the folds. And now I'm just going to cut it once and I will cut two sheets of paper and we will do it again and cut two. When you cut on the line, you are cutting more than halfway up. Do not cut all the way through and make sure you are cutting at the point. You can open it back up, fold the other direction, and you're going to cut at the point again, cutting a little bit more than halfway up. Mine was about as long as my finger. Your fingers are smaller, so make sure you're cutting more than halfway. So now you're going to get that extra sheet of paper we pushed off to the side, that rectangle. We are going to find a circle to trace. You can either draw a circle or trace one. You can use a glue stick cap or a quarter. Quarter is pretty much the perfect size, so if you have a quarter laying around, that would be great. So I trace the quarter, and now I'm going to cut it out. After I cut it out, I'm going to add a little bit of color. All right, now time for the glue. We're gonna add a little glue to the center and we're gonna pick up one corner and bending it, not folding it, bending it lightly, pressing it into the center. We let the next corner stick out and then the next corner we bend into the center, lightly. One corner sticks out, the next corner we bend into the center lightly. We're creating a pattern here if you notice. We rotate our pinwheel and the corner sticks out and then we bend lightly into the center. All right, now we'll take our center circle that we traced with a quarter, add some glue and glue it down. This is going to hold everything in place. So now we're going to attach it to the straw with a pin. If you have a very long pin, it usually works a little bit better. I do not, I have a shorter uh, push pin that I'm using, so it does work. I just have to be careful I don't knock it off the straw. So I will put my pin through the center, watching my fingers, and then I'm going to push the pin through the straw. You don't want to add glue to this because if the straw sticks to the paper, you will not be able to move your pinwheel. Now if you see, my pinwheel can spin around. If I was to blow on it or move it with my hand, it will actually move. If you don't happen to have a straw or a pin at home, think of what else you could use instead. Good luck! Can't wait to see your pinwheels!